Hello dear learner, welcome back to our lessons and as usual my YouTube channel is Wilfred Mumani Omkangi hyphen Kiongozi. We are now moving on to form 3 and we shall do a very interesting part of commercial arithmetic and we are in the tail end of this chapter form 3 called income tax. So income tax is the main source of revenue for a given nation. People that are employed by the government or even in the private sector have a responsibility, especially in Kenya, to give taxes to its government. Reasons why the government collects taxes. Number one, to be able to fund its expenditure. And we have two common types of expenditures. One, capital expenditure. Two, recurrent. So briefly before we go to the mathematics part of it, capital expenditure is coming up with new projects. New projects. Recurrent expenditure is a enhancement. Enhancement or improvement of the uh, projects that are in the government. For example, paying of salaries of the employers and maybe uh, repairing of roads and such kind of things. But capital expenditure, as we have said, is coming up with new projects. For example, a new road, new tarmac road, for example, a new school, and such kind of things. So, taxes and especially income tax is the main source of revenue for a government. I want to take you through how we are going to calculate the taxable income. And there is a uniform formula. There is a uniform formula that is applied in the calculation of the taxes for various civil servants. Remember, the more you earn, the more you pay as tax. So work with me, have somewhere to write, and as usual, concentrate in business. Write the following notes. So income tax is the main source of revenue for a nation. And uh, funds, funds collected are used in what we have already said, capital expenditure, capital expenditure and recurrent expenditure. Recurrent expenditure. Uh, this collection of taxes, taxation, Taxation is done uniformly so much so that the more you earn, the more you earn, comma, the more you pay as tax. So, uh, so it means there is proportional calculation. In other words, your salary are going to be calculated proportionally. So we have what we call proportional tax rates. In other words, there is no mistake that can occur in calculation of tax. So we have technologies or concepts I want us to learn in this lesson. And the first one is gross income. Gross income. Gross income is our first terminology or concepts. Gross gross income this is the total amount of money 
that you are. Total amount of money that somebody earns. And this money is also called, also referred to as taxable, taxable income. Something very interesting about this taxable income, it comprises of the basic salary, basic salary, and we can even say plus, plus allowances. So basic salary is that amount of money that you are paying every month, but allowances, basic salary is a right. Because you can't be employed and you're denied basic salary. But allowances are privileges. And privileges that you receive depend on several factors. The nature of the work that you are doing, maybe the goodwill of your employer, and probably the place where you are working. We can give examples of these allowances. We shall be applying them as we move on. We have quite common ones for civil servants and even those work in the private sector, we have medical allowance or allowances. We have, just to name a few, we have commuter, commuter or transport. Transport allowance, we have hardship allowance or allowances. We have um, Quite a number of them, there is house, house allowances. So, and I'm saying, the allowances given here will vary from one person to another, depending on three things or even four things, the nature of the work that you're doing, the type, uh, sorry, the, the goodwill of your, uh, your employer, and probably the place where you're working. For example, if you're working in a hardship area, you receive hardship allowance. If you're working uh, far away from where maybe you work, you live far away from it, uh, you'll be given commuter or transport or traveling allowance. There is also a medical cover or allowance that you're given so that at least it can cater for your medical cover. So these are some of the allowances that you expect in any given question. But still remember, at times you can be given zero allowances. Yeah, from there now, I will tell you that uh, gross income or taxable income will give you two marks. Once you are able to total the taxable income, I mean the, the basic salary plus the allowances, if they are any, you get two marks. But remember, there is a table that I will introduce you to, and that table will require you to convert the units, convert your workings to the units that are given in that table, or else, when you are not given the instruction, you shall look at the table and convert your values according to that uh, table. We have an occasion. We have an occasion that is not very common. We have an occasion that is not very common. And that occasion is when you are housed. That is an occasion, let us say, we are still talking about taxable income. And we have a scenario where, this scenario, where you are housed, housed by the employer. When you are housed by the employer, it is different from being given a house allowance. In this case, the formula for taxable income changes a little, and this is what we have. Taxable income, taxable income, which you also call a gross salary, is equal to basic salary plus allowances plus something is added here. 15%, 15 over 100 times 
basic salary, my BS is basic salary, minus nominal, nominal rates. I have introduced these parts. This shows us that when you are housed or given a house by your employer, you are added some money, which is 15% of the basic salary, and then to, to the taxable income, and then nominal rent is deducted or subtracted from the total. I think nominal rent is going to help in maintenance of the house and maybe pay some bills, maybe electricity and such kind of, for the maintenance of that house, nominal rent has to be deducted. That means probably and most likely the amount of money you earn when you are being housed is slightly higher. However, again, you will be deducted nominal rent to cater for the, 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 the development of that house and also maybe making it uh, uh, better for you to stay in it. This is a rare occasion, but when it comes, remember to change this formula. Not as the other usual one where we say, just normally if you are not housed by the employer, taxable income is equals to basic salary plus allowances. Take note of this. We now move to the nature of tables that we have, the taxation tables. So I think we are through with the two parts. We can now go to the nature of taxation tables. The nature of taxation tables. The taxation tables. We have three types of taxation tables. And all taxation tables, on the left hand side, we have what we call taxable income. At the middle, we have rates. And on the right hand side, we have gross tax. So what happens is, if your table is given on the taxable income, you're given Kenya shillings, for example. Then the rate is given in shillings per pound, Kenya shillings per pound. What you will do, you will multiply the amount taxable income times R divided by 20. And the result that is on the gross tax, you will get your result in Kenya shillings. Case number two. If the taxable income is in Kenyan pounds, then the rate is in Kenya shillings per pound. You will multiply by rate without dividing by 20 and the result will be Kenya shillings. Case number three and the last one. If your taxable income is in Kenya shillings, and the rate is percentage, percentage, whereby you will be given the rate in percentage, you will multiply with R over 100, and the result will be Kenya shillings. I want to tie something else with the last one here. Suppose your taxable income was Kenya pounds, and then the rate is percentage, you do the same here, but now the result changes a little and you get Kenya pounds as your result. If it is Kenya shillings, rate in percentage, you do the same and you get Kenya shillings. If it is Kenya pounds and the rate is in percentage, you get your result here as Kenya pounds. These are the three nature uh, of tables that you expect. The next thing is about how you now move on with taxation. We have what we call slabbing. You take the amount of money that you already have as taxable income, put that money in the table that I will be showing you, and then start taxing. What you are looking for is six marks. You are looking for six marks. And these six marks, you will get them by the time you get the net tax. So I go straight to the net tax, give you some tips. And then we we'll move on like that. Net tax. Net 
The moment you tax, the total tax you will get is called gross tax. This one is total tax. I want to remind you again that on the left hand side we have the taxable income, on the right hand side we have the gross tax. Once you are through with the total uh, taxable income, you will get the total tax on the right hand side which is going to be the gross tax. In fact, we call it tax before relief. Tax before relief. Tax before relief or total tax. The importance of this tax is it will enable you get what we call net tax. And net tax is what we are calling income tax. Income tax is what we call pay as you earn. Pay is what we call tax payable. So students, when you come across any of the four words here, they mean the same thing. Net tax, income tax, pay as you earn, or tax payable. This one is gotten by, so I can write this way and say, pay as you earn is gotten by gross tax. Gross tax minus reliefs. I have done that deliberately. Pay as you earn is equal to gross tax minus reliefs because I know we have several types of reliefs and commonly we have personal relief, personal relief. We also have another one that is not very common called life insurance scheme. We can say scheme or policy. Personal relief is mostly for married people and they just relieve you. They give you some little amount of money to pay your taxes. This one is commonly known as uh, the relief for married persons. They know that married people have got responsibilities and so they have to relieve their responsibilities by paying a little bit of their tax. Let me talk about life insurance policy. Just like housing or being given a house by your employer, this one is also unique like that. Life insurance policy. Life insurance scheme come policy. There are people who insure themselves against any risky life maybe accidents, diseases, or even death, and they give what we call premiums on a monthly basis. So you're insuring your life against any risk, but there's nothing coming your way. You have no risk, and you are just living a good life. What you do, you make a claim. You claim that some percentage of that money that you're giving as premiums for your life insurance scheme be used to help you pay the taxes and this one is going to be 15 percent 15 we only say three shillings per pound which is equivalent to 15 percent of the premiums so 15 percent of the premiums you pay for life insurance policy will be detected will be will be uh, uh, used to help you pay your tax as part of the relief. You may benefit from both policies. If you benefit from uh, both policies, that means they will take the personal relief plus 3, plus three over 20 or 15% of the premiums, total them together and subtract them from the gross tax. And that means you will have found what we call tax payable or the pay. We go to the last thing called net salary, which is the opposite of gross salary. The opposite of taxable income is net income. Net salary, the last thing now.
So next salary stroke income. This is what you can be able to go home with, what you can withdraw from your bank. If you look at the amount of money that you're earning totally, in fact, in terms of gross, you will not carry all that money because some money will be used for deductions, some money will be used for taxes, others will be used for other things that maybe you are uh, committing yourself to. So this is what we write. The formula for net salary is uh, net salary is equals to gross salary minus deductions. Gross salary is what we say taxable income. So taxable income minus deductions. Now, the last part, the very last part. Deductions. Which ones are these? Deductions are divided into two. There is one deduction that is a must, and that deduction is what we call net tax. That is deduction number one. Deductions, the rest of the deductions, we categorize them as other deductions. Again, which vary from one person to another. We have the common ones in Kenya, National Health Insurance Fund. We have National Social Security Fund. There are people who have loans in various banks and circles. There is what we call widows and children, yeah, widows, children, people with disability, what, scheme, we have several others, some people buy shares, and they are those who pay even what we call premiums, so these are some of the other deductions, and again, they vary from one person to another, for example, those who went to school in university and were given the high education loans, board money, they will be deducted some money when they are employed, and that part, that falls part of the deductions. So when you are able to get the total uh, salary or the gross salary, then you minus the deductions. Remember, the deduction number one is tax. Then, if there are other deductions, you total them there, and then you get your net salary. So much grateful for taking time and watching our video. We are moving to the next one in the next video. I will come with an example that will show you how you apply all this formula. Keep subscribing and keep watching our video. Bye.